All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory and honors to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekha Kodash, the honors of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. This is another edition of uh, GMS News and Prophecy. And I have an article here from TheHill.com. And his headline, Persian Gulf is vital enough for U.S. to go to war. Okay? Um, and this is a... Uh, All right, now this is a, uh, uh, you know, a testament to what we've been speaking about uh, for years, uh, starting with the puzzles here at GMS, about uh, this upcoming world war, okay? Uh, because the Persian Gulf is basically uh, part of the, uh, the battlefield that, World War Three is going to take place over there in the Middle East. Okay, uh, so it says Persian Gulf is vital enough for U.S. to go to war. All right. Now it says here it says would America fight if Iran closes the Persian Gulf to shipping? Confides the magic eight ball. Signs point to yes. Okay. Well, according to biblical prophecy, the signs point to yes. Okay. It says presidential administrations of both parties long have reserved the right to use force in the Gulf region when vital diplomatic, economic, or military interests are in peril. And they always seem to be in peril in the Gulf. Okay? So let me go ahead and get the prophecy in the scripture. Okay? Um, now, now, like I said, we've uh, been speaking about this here at GMS for years. And now we're starting to see these prophecies take place. So this is Jeremiah 28 and 7. It says, Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries, the same way we prophesy against America, the United States, and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence, right? And, and, and that war is coming. The evil is coming. And the pestilence is coming. Okay. So now let's get the scripture on uh, the Persian Gulf. Let's go to Joel, the second chapter. All right. Joel chapter 2, all right, verse 20. It says, Behold, I will remove uh, far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the East Sea. And his hinder part toward the utmost sea. That east sea uh, is the Persian Gulf. While that land barren is over there in Saudi Arabia. In the Middle East. Okay. It says, and his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall, uh, shall come up. Ill savor meaning the uh, uh, smell, the stench. Because he hath done great things. Okay. So this northern army or uh, uh, the armies of North America, North Com. Uh, uh, you know, the U.S. Air Force Army, okay? They're all going to be sent over there to the Middle East to fight over there in um, in um, uh, World War Three, okay? Along with uh, fighting against Iran, okay? Now, let's see here. All right. Um, so, it says... Uh, now, back in the article, it says, nor is the question merely hypothetical. Threatening to bar the Strait of Hormuz, the lone maritime gateway between the Gulf and the larger Indian Ocean, is a standard tactic for Tehran in times of stress. And when you go into Ezekiel 38 chapter, it speaks about uh, 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 Persia or Iran, okay, being a major part of the armies that are gathered onto Gog and Magog, which is Russia, okay? So it says, time such as now with rockets flying back and forth between Iranian-backed Islamic Jihad militants and the Israeli Defense Forces, and with new U.S. economic sanctions against the Islamic Republic starting to bite, vows uh, Ali Reza Ten Tengsiri, commander of the Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, in the event of any threats, we would not have the slightest hesitation to protect and defend Iran's waterway. Tehran means to slam the gateway shut. Okay. Um, so yeah. Okay. They could go in, in, into uh, 
uh, uh, over there in that region around the Persian Gulf because Iran could could shut down, uh, you know, trade getting through there. Okay, because of the economic sanctions, and that would brought that would drive the Northern Army or the American Army over there, and that's just one reason for World War Three to um to pop off, man. Okay, now there's another scripture, and this isn't gonna be too long. All right, it's, it, it, it's just straight to the point. All right, now when you go into the Apocrypha and Second Nudges, the 15th chapter. All right, it speaks about uh these um. People fighting, okay, um, which is uh, these Arabs, these Iranians, okay, and these other nations uh, destroying America. So this is uh, Second Ezra 15 and 28, okay. It says, Behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, over there in the Middle East. It says, Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots. Okay, so all those nations over there, like I said, those Arabs over there in the Middle East, this uh, Islamic Brotherhood, along with Iran, they're all going to come out with their armies. It says, and the multitude of them shall be carried as with as the wind upon earth, that all they which fear them, uh, which hear them, may fear and tremble. Also, the Carmanians. Now, when you look up this word Carmanians, it goes back to uh, Persia. It was it was a reason. It was a region in Persia. Which goes back to uh, the Elamites, all right, the people of Elam in the scriptures, which are the Iranians today, okay. So it says also the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the woods. So they're going to team up, Elam and Air and the Arabs or Ishmael are going to team up against America. It says and with great power shall they come and join battle with them. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. The Assyrians is talking about the Americans. Okay. Um, it says, And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. Because these uh, these people were one time allied with America, such as the, uh, the Saudis, uh, um, um, you know, the Iraqis, okay, Afghanistan, all those countries over there. But they're going to remember who they are as a people. And they're going to destroy America. It says, and if they shall turn themselves conspiring together in great power to persecute them, then these shall be troubled, bled, and keep silence through their power and shall flee. Okay? So, they're going to destroy America, man. Okay? Over there in the Persian Gulf, where World War Three is going to be fought. Okay? The whole region, the uh, Mediterranean Sea, which is between uh, um, uh, Europe and the Middle East over there, that's the uh, the Hindemos Sea, okay. So that whole uh, uh, region over there is going to be on fire, so to speak, okay. And this is going to spell the end of the United States, okay. And that's biblical prophecy, all right. Um. Yeah, and that's the point. Okay. All right. So these things are uh are coming to pass quickly, all right? World War Three is fast, fastly approaching, quickly approaching. Okay. The end of America is quickly approaching. All right. And the Lord has raised up his prophets in these last days, starting with the men of Great Millstone, to 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 speak these things before they happen. Okay. All right. You know, we're in the end now, okay? Or, uh, um, we're in the end game now, okay? Now we're in the end game, all right? And, uh, the, the, uh, of the, uh, true avenger of the nation of Israel, Yahweh Shai, okay, is on his way back to deliver the elect and destroy these nations and set up his kingdom, okay? All right? Um, so I'm gonna end back on the scripture I read first, uh, Jeremiah 28. Okay, Jeremiah 28 and 7, it says, Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. All right, so that's what's coming, war. 
evil, pestilence, destruction is coming to these kingdoms and these countries. And with that, I hope this was edifying. Until next time, I say Shalom.